Okay, so here's an interesting topic from Answers in Genesis. Okay, so let's listen to what these guys open up with. Did the serpent have legs? That's a question I get all the time. People are asking about that serpent in Genesis chapter 3 that was influenced by Satan. Did it have legs? That's always a good question. Yeah, we're talking about back to the Garden of Eden, back to that serpent. What was its original appearance? Did it always crawl on its belly or did it have some kind of legs? Was it able to move around? What do you think? Where did this idea even come from? When you go look back at the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, there's a good description of what's going on when Adam and Eve sin against God. There's a serpent involved. It doesn't actually mention Satan, but Satan is discussed later on in the Bible. That's how we know that Satan was involved in this particular deception. But when we started the Creation Museum, we... Right, so you just you ignore the, the, the answer, you know, sitting there on the edge of my seat waiting for the answer because this is interesting to me. About 10 years ago, I was on Facebook and I presented that idea uh, about, you know, um, the question of uh, did the serpent in the Garden of Eden have legs? And I said it did. And then the legs were taken off, and we have evidence of that today by the snake. Because the snake crawls on its belly, not like a your typical lizard. A lizard is a reptile, a snake is a reptile. Make no mistake about that. Now, oops, yeah, this is right. So, upon thy belly thou shalt go. What happened here? Alright, so right there, verse 14. <clears throat> and this is after the serpent beguiled Eve. And uh, God said um, that, you know, he, he changed, he kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden, basically, right? So now because of what happened, Eve was going to have children. And um, her desire is going to be to... Her husband and Adam said, "Because thou has voic uh, has uh, hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, um, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life." All right. So, anyways, so there was change being made, change to Eve, change to Adam, and change also to the serpent. And because this happened, the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt eat all the days of thy life. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. And so, that to me is a clear reference that, hey, you're not gonna have legs anymore you're just gonna squirm your way through life right and um, another evidence to support this is uh, in the very first verse of Genesis 3 it says the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made so today the most subtle creature in the entire world is the snake all right, and uh, it's an interesting um, thing to consider to look at. Uh, you know, s snakes will hide in the sand, will bury themselves in the sand, and wait, and wait, and wait for months for s for their prey to walk by, and then they'll strike them and kill them. There's not a more subtle creature in the world. And it's interesting to learn about the snake. Now, I don't like snakes. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't like, I don't care. Don't care at all uh, about snakes. I don't like them. I don't like spiders. Don't like them at all. But uh, the most evil creature, the most evil looking creature, in my opinion, is the bat. Now, all right, enough of that. So, let's get into... Uh, a few of the things. Have an exhibit out here. Uh, a few of the things that they talk about here. First of, of all, the serpent, and of course, when we had that, it turned into a firestorm of debate because we had all these different people going. Maybe the serpent looked like this, like this. Did, did it have legs? Did it slither well, already? Hold on a second. Now, it, just in case there's any confusion, uh, 
when um, the Bible talks about the serpent, uh, like for example, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to share this with you, but in this video they mention the idea, he says, well, the Satan isn't actually the snake or the serpent. That's true in the same sense that Jesus is not actually a lamb. Jesus is the lamb of God, but he's not a he's not a farm animal. Okay. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? Let's not be confused about there shouldn't be any confusion about it at all. Brain. In fact, we've got one. This is a model that some of our artists did way back in that day of a potential look at the serpent. You know, you can. Okay, so I would agree with this before his legs were taken off. You know, I'm not sure about the backbone, but whatever. All right. Now these guys will quote the ESV, and obviously I got a big problem with the ESV. Uh, if we could go to Matthew 18, if you don't believe in a Bible, if you don't believe in any Bible, how do you teach the Bible? And um, you know. I guess it's only for people that, um, you know, think about it, people that want the truth are going to be able to see it, that we do have a perfect, pure word of God in the English language. It is the King James Bible, and the ESV and all other modern uh, Bible versions are corrupt. There's no way to get around it. You cannot say this is the true word of God. You can't. Even a child can say, look, can look and see 9, 10, 11, 12, go to the ESV, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. There's a no 11. It's like they can't count that. This has obviously been removed from the Bible. And they're not even honest enough to, to put a, an 11 there. Uh, it's all kinds of problems with the ESV. And that's just one example. One example of one omission. One omission in the, of the Bible. It completely nullifies the entire Bible. All right, Because you can no longer say this is from God. Right? And I'm telling you, the King James Bible is from God. And it, uh, it requires faith. Just like everlasting life requires faith. Without faith you cannot uh, be given everlasting life. Faith. There's nothing greater or more powerful than faith. And it begins with the faith of Jesus Christ. He has led the way. He had faith. And, and anyway, so let's get into this. You can see this one's kind of got the sprawling legs and it crawls on its belly already. Now here at the Creation Museum we also have a room. It's called the War Room. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Yeah, the reason it's called the War Room is people are battling uh, over different exhibits. The most hotly debated ones. What are the serpent? And the reason why people debate on them is because there's such precious little info that's actually available. If we go back to that Genesis account, Genesis chapter 3, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast in the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say? I think we can rule out dinosaurs. I don't think that it was... Uh, you know, that ESV just bothers me. It just doesn't ring true at all. So anyways, was the serpent the dinosaur? This guy is going to give a false definition of a dinosaur. It's necessarily a, a dinosaur because if, if you look at a dinosaur and the actual definition of a dinosaur, it is a reptilian land creature that has hip structures. A reptilian... What do you say? Look at a dinosaur and the actual definition of a dinosaur. It is a reptilian land creature that has hip structure. A reptilian land creature that has hip structure. Now, where's he getting that at? Now, I've always been told, maybe they changed the definition, but when I was a little boy, the definition of a dinosaur was giant lizard. Which is a lizard and a reptile is the same thing. Alright, dinosaur, fossil, a fossil reptile of the Marzuzer era. 
billions of years ago in a land far, far away. A person or thing that is outdated. Okay, so that's uh, nothing about a land creature or hip structure. What is defined as a dinosaur? Defining dinosaurs, a more handy general definition would go something like this. Dinosaurs are extinct. That's a great definition. What dinosaur is not a dinosaur? Well, if it's not a dinosaur, then it's not a dinosaur. Okay, so, eh, chickens. Yeah, just, uh, are people dinosaurs? Yeah. I say it's hard to get a straight answer anymore. Yeah, I mean, really. Dinosaurs are a diverse group of reptiles. Okay, so, I'm telling you, when I was a boy, it was very simple. A dinosaur is a word that means great lizard. All right, so we're not gonna, Google's not gonna help us today. All right, does it ever help us? So that it raises its body up off the ground. So as a result, that is never, it's not in any definition I've ever heard. This is the first time I heard that definition. I've always known a dinosaur to be a great lizard. I don't think the serpent was cursed into something like a dinosaur because its belly does not crawl on the. All right, so the dinosaurs still exist today. You think of the Triceratops. There you go. I was talking about this with somebody yesterday, and I told him to think about this. Here we got the Triceratops. So let's go to. Right there it is. Oops. The world did I just do? Okay. So, um, you look at this, alright? So, you got the Jackson Chameleon. Bone for bone, the exact same as the Triceratops. The only difference is the Triceratops are, one, bones that are found in the ground, which can only mean that they were they were put in the ground in a very sudden fashion which obviously the only explanation for it is the flood of Noah that's the only explanation it's the only possible explanation they didn't just die fall over and then sink into the dirt that's stupid that doesn't happen it's never happened ever it's illogical they were in a flood and the mud and everything fell on top of them in a very quick fashion all right it can only happen by a flood that's the only possibility now the difference also is in size all right so if i i once had somebody tell me that um because it's bigger it's not the same creature I'm not making this up. That's what somebody told me. I mean, people will try to rationalize uh, to fit their worldview in the most nonsensical possible way. All right. So think about this. If you find a baby skeleton, does that mean it's not human because it's too small? Uh, you find a, a like a six foot skeleton and then a little baby skeleton. Does that mean they're different? kinds of creatures no so why are these triceratops the skeleton remains found and I don't want to hear no ridiculous um, accusations that all these are fake all right that's just stupid that's for stupid people I don't want to even deal with that there's too much evidence and I'm be, there's the fact that these creatures are still alive today, <laughs> it, to say these are not real is to say this is not real. All right, and look, let's just, I mean, if we're going to go all, all out on stupidity, why not, right? Fact is, these creatures or these bone structures have been found. They do exist and they still exist today. The reason why these are bigger is because it's a scientific fact that reptiles never stop growing in size so as long as they live and as long as they eat 
they will grow and grow and continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger now it was that happening before the flood of Noah yeah it certainly was because we have record of Adam living 930 years and yeah, there's re records of lots of people living many hundreds of years before the flood and then the flood came and that changed all that changed but before the flood they were living hundreds of years so also would have reptiles the Jackson chameleon being one of them would have lived hundreds of years and they would have had ample opportunity to eat and grow and grow and grow and if that were true we'd have evidence of it in the fossil record from the flood of Noah and we absolutely have that evidence in the fossil record no doubt about it okay it's naive and stupid to suggest that triceratops do not exist in order to make that claim you have to say these creatures do not exist all right so if you're going to get stupid you might as well go all out on the ground that's actually up above the ground dinosaurs are land animals by their technical definition so they would have been <clears throat> you know i don't want to get into into the idea of land animals okay because there are reptiles that live in water so anyways i don't want to get into that man made on day six of creation right. same day as man so they did live together uh and the the unique thing about dinosaurs is by and large we think they've died out there they've gone extinct so one of the questions here's but here's an interesting question who was the seed or the offspring of the serpent ah that's kind of an interesting question people don't look at that one so much let me yeah people look at it way too much uh, i you must be living under a rock like i live under but a different rock where you're not seeing it. I'll read you a handful of verses here. Uh, these come from the New King James, Matthew 3 7. The New King James is not a New King James Bible at all. Seven. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from this wrath to come? Here's Matthew 12 34. Brood of vipers, how can. Okay. I, it just drives me nuts that, uh, you know, these guys. They don't believe in any Bible, and they'll quote anything but the King James Bible. And, uh, and not, not only that, they think they're smarter than everybody else, because why else would they be, uh, you know, picking and choosing which Bible version they're going to share? All right, generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation? of hell and this also goes um, along this idea that people say well Jesus he never raised his voice ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell Jesus was passive you'll hear people say right he was passive he didn't raise his voice he was gentle all the time he was weak and um, puny and uh, not bold he was not bold at all he just went along with everybody else now I'm not kidding you that's what they say that's the complete opposite of any I'm not saying Jesus was a hard ass but in a sense he could be very hard ass uh, as we read in the scripture and it's not gonna get any tougher than when he comes in the clouds of heaven and judgment is made it's going to be strong, as strong as it gets, right? So, anyways, uh, so, what's the question here? The, the, okay, so, well, I've talked about this before, where people will blatantly ignore Genesis 4-1 and pretend like it doesn't exist. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And people will ignore that and say, well, yeah, but the thing is, Cain was born of the serpent. The serpent had sex with Eve. And uh, so Cain is half human, half snake. But you have to just be blind to verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, 
That means they had a, a relation, and she conceived. How did she got pregnant, and she had a baby, and that baby was Cain, and she said, "I have gotten a man from the Lord." There's just you just have to ignore it. Just take a permanent marker and erase that out of your Bible. All right, and then. Okay, so uh, this uh, question of seed, I, I've seen this brought up way too many times. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is not a physical seed. This is not, well, the serpent is going to have sex with women, and they're going to be half human and half snakes that's that's comic book stuff that's sci-fi stuff that's zombie stuff that's ridiculous stuff that's not what this is talking about at all and you know there this is a good study as well and that is to uh, study the promise that was made to Abraham and to his seed right in short story long here let's go to uh, Hebrews no as Galatians I'm sorry yeah I gotta think about this Galatians where are we at here oh there's a lot there okay so Galatians 3, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So this is, again, not a physical seed. Right, the, speed represent, the seed represents the spiritual line. All right, and that seed is Christ. So if we're in Christ then are we Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise all right. it's always been about faith in the Spirit of God it's not about this you know this idea that a snake is having sex with a woman is stupid all right. you, you don't care about the truth at all, all right. I mean there's really is there any point to talking to somebody that's that ridiculous and that stupid I don't think I don't see any value at all you're not gonna change their mind they're just gonna take the stupidest thought that comes to their head and believe that is the gospel nobody in their right mind is gonna look at verse 15 and believe that this is about a snake having sex with a woman is stupid okay so this that's enough right, I can't take any more of these corrupt Bible verses and why would the serpent go after Eve I think it's about 15 minutes of uh, you know going after one the woman going after women attacking women and, you know maybe when you talk about that subject it would be good to have a woman actually explain it in her own, in her own words. Uh, you know, I don't, I you know, I don't know what they're gonna say, but I've heard people be a little bit too critical of women. All right. So, anyways, regardless, that's my views on views on it. So, like I said, about ten years ago, I presented this idea, and um, you know, you know, nobody cares. Nobody listens to me. But I do think it's interesting a little bit that it does say, Upon thy belly thou shalt go in all the days of thy life, uh, and thou shalt eat dust all the days of thy life. Okay. <clears throat> Upon thy belly shalt thou go. And these guys, they'll show um, other reptiles walking. And I won't be able to find it, but they'll show what like an um, alligator walking right there now listen 
snake. Yeah, like a crocodile, for example, right? See, he's not on his belly. That doesn't work. The sprawling legs, it's still crawling on his belly. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to. It's not crawling on his belly. It could be a snake. Yeah, like a crocodile, for example, right? Yeah, like a crocodile, for example. It's not crawling on his belly. It, you know what? I got a great big fat belly. I could crawl on my belly, too. That's not what Genesis 3 is talking about. Genesis 3, when the Lord says, Upon thy belly shalt thou shalt go, he's not talking about a Cheetos eater like me. He's talking about the snake losing its legs. Okay, anyways, that's enough.